Welcome to the video where we're going to be talking about real-life problems that involve exponential functions. We need to understand what those exponential functions mean, what does it mean to have initial value, and how do we check what happens after some time in the real-life problem. So for example, you see a problem about some species of animals. A species of animal is discovered on the island, suppose the population size is denoted as p of t, that's pretty standard, and then can be molded by the following function, and they gave it the following function, let me just put it in the box. t is measured in time, uh, time is t, and measured in years, that's the idea, that's pretty typical. Find the initial population, a. What is the initial population? Every time you see a phrase, initial, initial means t equals zero. That's what you should remember. Initial, initial means plug the time equals zero or number of items sold, x equals zero, or number of bacteria divided, b equals zero. So whatever is your variable, let it be zero. So in, the, in this case, initial population is size for the species after nine years. So I'm going to just, uh, then uh, you find the population after nine years. So that's already not initial anymore. That makes sense. So let's make it clear. This is A, initial population size. And then after nine years, that is B, A, and B. That's the idea. Initial is actually pretty simple. Don't freak out when you see problems like these in your homework or on the exam. So I'm going to plug t equals 0, plug t equals 0 into the exponential equation uh, they gave you, plug into star, let's call it star, so I'm going to just call this equation star, looking nice star, and then p at 0 becomes 450 all over 1 plus 5 e to the minus 0 point. 2, 9, and guess what? Times 0 over here. And this is all in denominator. So then we need to review. Oh, first, let's finish the calculations. It's going to be 450, 1 plus 5e to the 0. Because 0 times negative 0 0.29 is 0. Note, just make sure you remember the properties of exponential function. a to the 0 is what? 1. Whatever a is. In this case, a is e. So we're going to have 450 all over 1 plus 5 times 1, because e to the 0 is 1. So that's 450 over 6. 450 over 6. 450 over 6, that's 75. 75. That's the answer for the first question. 75. Individuals were at the beginning of the population. So when they discovered on the island uh, some kind of species of animals, they saw 75 of them. How do I know? Because when I plugged a zero over here into t, at time zero, we had uh, 75 species. Okay, good. B, and then B just ask you, do you understand what, it hap what happens if we plug nine? What does it mean, plug nine? Nine means t equals nine. That's what B asking about. B says after 9 years, that means t is 9. Okay, good. P at 9 is 450 all over 1 plus 5 e to the minus 0 0.29 times, guess what, 9. Grab your calculator and calculate. And you will get, not a very nice number, but since we're talking about population of animals, we cannot have 0.3 a turtle or 0.7 monkey so just round it and I can see in my solution it was rounded to 329 individuals so the answer is 329 at t equals 9 and 75 was at t 0 that's all that's how you learn how to interpret it, the exponential functions with real life problems, kind of makes sense. Now the next example doesn't give you any function and that's why students tend to stuck quite a lot. So I want to go over these problems carefully to make sure you understand what is going on here. So this is the finance problem. 
a certain loan program offers an interest rate uh, 3%, which was compound continuously. This is already enough to start writing down a formula. A formula for this case is A, which is a new balance, equals P, which is principal, times E raised to the RT. So I gave you a box over here, which explains that P is the principal, or basically the amount invested, the initial amount you put in the bank. A, that's new uh, balance, that's basically output. T is time, that makes sense, and R is rate, that makes sense as well, in decimal form. So we don't want to have 3% rate in this case. You always divide by 100. 3, do, uh, let me do like this. 3% divide by 100%. You always do that. And it's going to be 0 0.03. So R, R is 0 0.03. That's how you find out. And then continuously, Compound continuously have this formula, so you're required to remember this formula. Assuming no payments are made, how much would be uh, owned after two years? Two years, okay, so that's time. T equals two, we got that part. T equals two. On a loan of 1400, that's the original uh, investment. P equals 1400, make sense? So, Let's figure this out. Let's plug it into the formula. A equals 1400 times E raised to the 0 0.03 times, well, let me keep it T. So I keep it T because uh, I would even say it like this. I would keep it as T first because then you can have A, B, C, D questions and they can ask what happens in two years, now calculate in loan 15 years, now calculate 30 years, so you'll be plugging different t's. So I would put this in the box and, and call it original equation, where 1400 is the same original investment, rate is also the same because bank account is the same, and t is changing. Well, in this case, we only asked t, so this is a of t, a of t depends on t, we asked a of 2. So t is 2, and just like in the previous example, we're going to plug 2 into this formula. And then grab your calculator, then carefully calculate, and I'm getting over here in dollars, $1,486.57. And as a European, I always put dollar sign at the end, but you can do it at the beginning if you want. They say round it to the nearest cent, so that's what happened here. We did it to the nearest cent. Finally, let's put it in the box. One more quick example where they don't give you any formula. You have to figure it yourself, and that scares you, I know. But to be honest, they're all more or less the same. So if you get used to it, you kind of know how to do shortcuts. And this is how I'm going to teach you how to do shortcuts. The mass of radioactive substance follows continuous exponential decay model. Oh, that's the one. Okay. I know those formulas. Those that have exponential decays are always have some kind of original, um, original value. Let's call it P0 or whatever you call it. doesn't even matter what it is. I will call it Y0 then. So Y equals Y0 e to the minus rate T. That's kind of the idea. And uh, in this case, it's, this formula can have different names. I don't even need to check the book we're using in this semester because it's always the same. The idea is that some kind of initial value, dk means this negative sign, dk. And again, this is not even my major. Chemistry is not my major, so I don't know those things, but I know how math works. So dk means negative rate. Continuous exponential decay means exponential function is involved, so I put it E and for exponential function rate means RT will go to the exponent. And that's how I remember it. So let's read if I am right or not. A sample of the radioactive sentence has initial mass. Okay, so this is my initial, told you. Y equals initial is 6958 kilograms. It decreases continuously at a relative rate of 19% per day. Okay, then the rate R is 19% per 
all over 100%, always do that, divide by 100, 0 0.19, that's my R, cool. So I'm gonna pull E, since it says exponential decay, I will put negative sign into E, and then 0 0.19, where my R is. And then I will put T, and that's exactly what my F of T, or Y of T, whatever the book says, whatever they want us to use, doesn't matter. So what's the question? So I'm use, I used all the numbers, that feels good. <laughs> Find the mass of the sample after three days. Oh, okay, so they want me to plug t equals three. Done, t equals three. So don't freak out when you see those things. Honestly, it's just scary at the very beginning and it looks like a lot of English to read for a math class. That's how I always see it. Why we have to read so much? But then if you get used to it, you're like, oh, okay. I build the equation put it in the box and then no matter what years, days, minutes they want to plug, just plug t equals 3. In this case, plug t equals 3. So my y at 3 will be, careful plugging in, 6958e to the minus 0 0.19 times 3. Cool. Grab your calculator and calculate, it says round it to the whatever, whatever, 39, 34.9 in a unit, kilograms, not pounds, you see, ha, European rules. Uh, so that's the answer. That's the answer. Don't freak out if you see those questions. They always the same. Your job is not to blank out and to remember this formula. Whatever the whatever way you remember. So you see, I don't even probably remember proper notation, but the end still works because I just remember the idea behind it. So it's exponential function because it says exponential model. It says decay, so negative sign. It says a rate, continuous rate, so it's going to be minus RT. And it always has some kind of initial value. Do you know why it's initial value, by the way? Because if I plug note, note, find or like what find initial initial value well initial value actually is given but my point is what does it mean if i plug t equals zero my y will be y sub zero e to the zero but e to the zero is one we already mentioned that at the beginning of the video so that will give me y sub zero that's why it's always initial value make sense that's why when they give you, they say, oh, there was initial mass, initial mass, initial number of bacteria, initial whatever they're talking about. That's the one you multiplied by, it was multiplied by the exponential function. That's all, that's all. Not too bad and not too scary. Just uh, breathe, uh, inhale, exhale, and build your own model. Basically what you're doing right now is you're doing mathematical modeling and you can be proud of that. Great job and see you next time.